I wanted to mention the uh, retirement of Curtis Granderson. You know, 15 years from now, no one in in this town is going to think very that much about Curtis Granderson when we when they talk and they're doing sports talk 20 years from now. You know, they'll they'll pull out the stuff and and talk about Thurman Munson or Don Mattingly. They'll talk about obviously Derek Jeter and that great Yankee run. They'll they'll say, you know, was the Grom really that good? Hopefully they're talking about Alonzo's home runs by then. But a guy like Granderson would he'll fall somewhere in the middle there and he'll get lost. But you know what? Granderson had a really I thought a very interesting baseball career. First of all, he always caught my eye when he was with the Tigers because you know when I you don't usually see guys hitting 20 triples. And I always liked him. So when the Yankees got him, I was fascinated by him, but he was not the same player when the Yankees got him that he was in Detroit. First of all, he wasn't as good an outfielder as I thought he was. Secondly, he became a dead pull hitter who who basically fell in love with the porch and stopped doing what he did when he'd have, you know, 38 doubles and 20 triples and 20 homers in Detroit. He obviously said, you know what? I'm going to get pull happy here. And I'm going to hit the ball out of the ballpark, as he did, hitting 41 and 43 homers for the Yankees. And as you know, he is—he loved hitting the Yankee Stadium. When he went back to Yankee Stadium, he hit home runs. He was grooved into the Yankee Stadium. He was made for the—there are guys who are made for the lower porch. Okay? There are guys who are made for the lower deck. Bobby Mercer was made for the lower deck and right. All right? Uh, a guy who played for the Tigers, a little second baseman named Dick McAuliffe, was made for the Yankee Stadium lower deck and right. Grandison was made for the lower deck and right. I mean, he had a grooved swing to flip the ball into the seats in the lower deck and right. Some guys just do. And now a lot of righties have taken to doing it and have gotten very good at it. I mean, Jeter was very good at it. With that inside-out, Jeterian swing of his, he could dump him down in there too. But Grandison, he had some, you know, this guy... This guy scored 136 runs for the Yankees one year. That's an outrageous number of runs. I mean, that's a, think about it. You can't find that many times guys score 130 runs in a season. He scored 136 runs. He had 40 home runs twice. He had a year for the Yankees that he had 41 homers, 119 RBIs, and 136 runs scored. That's a sensational season. He went over to the Mets, and he had some very odd years in that he had these wicked slumps. But you know what? When the Mets made their run, he had a great September. I mean, he carried them, and he had some good years for them. I mean, he hit 30 homers for them. He hit 26 homers for them. He hit 30 homers for them. I mean, he had some weird years there, which I'd be the first to admit because he had some prolonged slumps that were crazy. But he had some really good years there. So to me, always a very intelligent guy, a nice guy. Played 16 seasons. You play 16 seasons in the majors, and you hit 40 homers for the Yankees twice, and you hit 30 homers for the Mets, you know, and you play in big games for the Yankees, and you play in big games for the, for the Mets. And you wind up hitting, you know, 350 doubles and 350 homers. Not exact, like 340-something and 346 doubles and 344 homers or whatever it was. And I always thought if you, I always thought if you scored 1,000 runs or you knocked in 1,000 runs, and especially if you did both, you had a really good career. It was not easy to score 1,000 runs. not easy to knock in 1,000 runs. And this guy scored 1,200 runs, almost knocked in 1,000 runs, and hit 344 home runs. That's a heck of a career. Not a Hall of Famer by any stretch of the imagination. 
I wouldn't tell you that he was. By any, you know, the guy hit 250 for his career. His batting average, once he learned to pull at Yankee Stadium, just kept going down and down and down. As you know, he became just a crazy pull hitter. Early in his career, I mean, he sprayed the ball around, hit 270, hit 280, hit 302, but that was that was when he was playing a little differently. When he came there and saw the light, saw the, the, the friendly combines, all he wanted to do was hit home runs. But you know what? I thought he had a heck of a career. I really did. I thought he made an impact. And I'm not telling you he's going to be an all-time anything or an all-time Yankee or an all-time Met or an all-time great or a Hall of Fame. He's not any of that stuff. But that's a guy that, like I said, 10 to 15 years ago, from now, no one will even think of remembering him. But he, he had an impact here. He really did.